One thing we talk a ton about on this show is the value of masterminds. Today, I wanna to share with you four big lessons that I've learned from running a $25,000 mastermind with about 100 people. This mastermind was absolutely incredible, and a lot of people saw great results, but I believe we always have to be learning, we always have to be growing, right? Masterminds are a hugely important aspect of your growth, and today on Legacy Builders, I wanna share some lessons that will help you take masterminds to the next level. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Legacy Builders with Brian Delaney. If you've been listening to this show for very long, then you know that uh, we talk about masterminds here. Um, and that's partially because Brian, in your life, you've seen masterminds change everything for you and the people around you. And so today I'm excited because we're actually diving into four lessons that that you learned from actually running a mastermind that was you know $25,000 to get in for over two years. Mm -hmm. So kind of give me the backstory before we dive into these lessons of how this mastermind came about and um, yeah, really kind of the context around it. Yeah, absolutely, Seth. Thanks. Thanks for that. Um, you know, I've had masterminds that are lower level, you know, 6,000 to 7,000 hour masterminds, ran that for about five years and then really wanted my own mastermind, you know, something that I've always dreamed of having um, you know, in my value ladder, if you will, of, of offers um, because I've had tremendous growth from masterminds, being able to speak at masterminds, being able to meet different people at masterminds. I mean, I've been you know in masterminds for more than a decade now in this, in this industry, um, and I've just seen it catapult success. And so, you know, uh, when it came to launching our mastermind uh, that we originally launched, the, the first $25,000 mastermind, I launched it with a partner um, who, you know, we collaborated on uh, the, the launch with, you know, Tony Robbins and Dean Graciosi by promoting them. And so what we did was we used that product launch as an opportunity to bring everybody to an event. So everybody who bought Tony Robbins and Dean Graciosi's program through us, they had the opportunity to come to an event. And then at that event, we presented the option for a mastermind. And that's really, you know, one of the better environments to sell mastermind, you know, imagine having, you know, we had 239 people, 69 of them applied for the mastermind. Not all of them got in because they didn't all qualify. But imagine having 500, 1,000 people in a room and then, and then presenting that mastermind option. It's one of the best ways to fill a mastermind um, by already having a group of buyers that has spent 2,000 bucks with Tony Robbins, Dean Graciosi. It was a perfect fit for launching a mastermind. Um, now, with all that said, the mastermind was great. Uh, there was a lot of lessons learned along that journey. Uh, of supporting, you know, about a hundred people over the course of those two years, and uh, I'm, I, I'm excited to share some of those lessons with you today. Yeah, yeah, I think that's great. I'm I'm excited to learn them. And again, this is uh, this is one of the main things that we keep coming back to. It seems hard to get away from this concept of masterminds and the value that it brings. So the first lesson has to do with kind of a mastermind versus agency kind yeah. of realization. Tell me about that. Yeah. Yeah. So what I realized is that, you know, most of the people that were in our mastermind at 25 K, uh, you know, really shouldn't have been in the mastermind. They really should have hired an agency or hired a team or hired people to help them execute. Um, what I found was that a lot of the people that were in the mastermind now, you know, say 10% of them already have very successful businesses. 10% of them already earn over a million dollars a year. That's different, right? I mean, I think that once you've hit that level of success of cracking the code, if you will, to being able to produce a, a seven plus figure business, then, you know, being in masterminds makes a lot of sense because number one, it's a tax good, it's a great tax write off. And number two, you can actually do the strategies that, that people share in the room, uh, or you can collaborate with other people that are already making things happen as well. So, uh, you know, f from my perspective, looking back was I, you know, 90% of the people that joined our mastermind from the beginning, if I was to go back in time, rewind the clock and, and, and give them another path, I would have said, you know, you guys should hire our agency perfect funnel system to really help you launch something, make it profitable, get some data, get some results, and then join the mastermind and then work on optimizing and scaling your campaign, uh, using the, the, the leverage and the influence of the mastermind group and the mastermind and the people that are in that group, right? So my lesson here really is, you know, hire a team of people who can help you produce the results and get you in the game. 
uh, you know, and then m- making an investment in a, say a $25,000 mastermind or $50,000 mastermind, it, it won't, you know, it won't be a huge investment, right? It won't be this huge thing where you're, you know, where it hurts to cut the check, right? Um, that's my best advice. Now, looking back after, you know, running that mastermind for two years, it's like, you know, really you need, you need people, you know, executing on your behalf using their skill sets, right? So that's number one. The second one I would say is choose your partners wisely. Uh, so, you know, I partnered with a guy who ended up having a lot of money problems and he basically consumed all of the profit from the mastermind because it needed to quote, pay his team and pay himself, you know, pay his, his family. Um, and the, the big lesson there was, you know, after we worked that, that situation out really was, um, to get your agreements in writing. You know, it's, it's something that my dad told me, my great grandfather had to learn it the hard way. You know, it's funny how, you know, history repeats itself until you break the cycle. And, you know, my grandfather, right. He lost a patent to an attorney. The attorney sold it from out from underneath of him for like 3 million bucks, completely, you know, screwed him out of the deal. My dad had a business for over 20 years with his brother, his brother, they never had an agreement. It was all like handshake and, and verbal and then you know push came to shove my brother or my dad's brother end up you know you know completely going off the rails he lost his mind uh from pharmaceutical drugs unfortunately and you know that was a, a a bad situation as well so for me i had to learn it myself right i mean i partnered with someone who i considered family considered really close friend and at the end of the day you know because we didn't have it in writing things went sideways. So my advice here for, uh, for you listening is really, you know, get your agreements in writing, uh, get your attorney to vet it, uh, flesh it out because you you know, your attorney should have your best interest in heart. And, and that, that it's the job of their attorney to have their best interest in heart. Right. And then you can meet halfway and you can, you know, figure it out. Right. I mean, at the end of the day, that's what it boils down to. I had blind faith, right? So I went into it trusting, which I really shouldn't have, ha- shouldn't have, but I went in trusting and I found myself, you know, literally missing out probably on a couple hundred thousand dollars uh, when it all shakes out. So lesson learned, right? Yeah. <laughs> lesson learned. Lots of lessons through it all, right? I mean, that's right. part of being an entrepreneur is that you learn things, you go through experiences and then, you know, we, we get the opportunity to share our experiences with others like we're doing here. And, and hopefully you can avoid uh, that lesson that I had to learn the hard way. Yeah, I think it's so common because, you know, we we want to trust people. We want to trust the people that we've worked with, especially when we've done previous business with them or they're like family. Um, and it's not even necessarily that everybody's going to screw us over or anything. It's just that the value of having things in writing um, is huge. So uh, totally. talk to me about clarity. The- clarity is power, right? So yeah. clarity, it's really boils down to, you know, I've been doing this for nearly 17 years now. And so it, it's it, when everyone's clear, right, then you can, you can go fast. When, when there's areas, gray areas, right. Uh, you give people an inch, you know, that sometimes they'll take a mile, unfortunately. So, right. um, so yeah, so that was a, that was a big lesson for me. The third one was really, you know, the fulfillment of this mastermind, right. So you know, really the way we created it from the beginning was it more of a coaching mastermind. So it's more of a, you know, you know, accountability coaches, you know, you know, hammering each member each week to make sure they're getting stuff done, holding their feet to the fire. Right. That was one aspect of the mastermind. Um, and then we did, you know, hot seat training and we did trainings every week through for the entire year. Um, I would do it differently now. Um, what, what I found is that a lot of those people, you know, reality is, is most of those people were not making a million a year. So they needed their feet held to the fire. Uh, you know, they needed a lot of support and coaching and training. They needed a lot of that initial inertia, if you will. My idea has always been for a mastermind to be more of what a true mastermind is, right? You think back to Napoleon Hill with Think and Grow Rich. I mean, the collaboration of minds is the con- is the concept of a mastermind, right? Helping people overcome the challenges that they're in right now in the moment and getting out of that through the collective effort of the group, right? So when I began thinking about, you know, if I, let's do a mastermind, let's do it differently, let's do it better, let's do it right way this time, um, not taking on any partners, but my wife and I running it, 
And so we decided that we're going to do, you know, a two to three day mastermind, but, but have it be somewhere epic, right? Somewhere like Hawaii, you know, rent this, rent a mansion, make it be a memorable experience where it's not just mastermind, right? But it's also experiential. So the way we've, you know, structured our, the next mastermind that we launch will be very different. Um, this is one thing that's different, right? It'd be, you know, let's say, let's take a week, right? So you got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, right? So Monday, Tuesday, we're going to have the first group of 20 to 25 people in. Then we'll have Wednesday as a, you know, a fun day, an excursion day as an experiential day where, uh, you know, where you'll never forget that experience, right? It'll be something that's, you know, with you forever. And then, and then that's where everybody comes together. And then Thursday, Friday, you know, to bring the next group of 20 to 25 people together. Um, and really what that looks like, if you've never been a part of my mastermind is sharing what, what's working, right? Sharing what's not working and where you need help. So that's the core of it, right? And, and then getting the feedback from the, the leaders and then the group, right? And so I think it's important, like what's working, right? You have to have something that's working. And the problem with the first mastermind that we launched was that a lot of these you know, people that were enrolling in reg- or into the mastermind really didn't have anything that was working yet. They were looking f- to create something that would work. And it's a very different scenario to be in a business where you, know, you have campaigns running, you, you have data, you have metrics uh, w- versus not having anything and, and trying to figure out what you're going to launch from, from the begin- beginning, right? So, so that's how we've, we've shifted that. Um, and then also, you know, 90 minutes with me, that still uh, was part of our first offer. And I think I got, we got such good feedback from that that obviously that's a big part of um, a big part of helping people you know, get clarity right. is is getting having minds on it that you know and so ninety minutes with me ninety minutes with my wife my wife's you know especially really is in the high ticket selling area because she sold you know over a hundred million dollars worth of stuff over a phone uh, without Zoom without Skype without any of that you know stuff um, and so we got her expertise ninety minutes and then you got my expertise of selling online and marketing online and advertising and all the things that I do. So, you you know, you think about it as like 90 minutes with her, 90 minutes with me throughout the year. And then, you know, bringing in guest speakers like, you know, some billionaires that we're connected to or some really high profile people that, you know, you're not going to be able to to get, right? You're not going to be able to get, I'm not going to mention any names right now, but, you know, these people are not just, you can't even pay them to show up. Like they have to, it has to be a relationship there. And so bringing in people that, you know, are at that level, right? Have generated over a hundred million dollars are at the billion, you know, billionaire status, you know, to share from their results and their expertise. Right. So bringing those type of people in, I think is valuable. We, we did a little bit of that in our first mastermind. Uh, we definitely did a, f- we brought in a few, you know, high profile people, not to the level of billionaire, but we definitely brought in some high level people mm-hmm. that have results others want. Um, and then, you know, we thought about it, you know, what, what else would we want, you know, um, access to financial, you know, strategies and investments that wealthy use, right? So the wealthy, uh, wealthy, the elite, the ultra wealthy, you know, play by a different uh, game. And so, um, you know, that's a huge part of our business. It's a huge part of our, you know, financial strategy as a family. Um, you know, we get asked questions about that all the time. So that's a huge piece of our new mastermind. Uh, podcast opportunities to be on the show here with us and uh, to be you know introduced to our audience. That'll be another opportunity. And then the big kicker is you got to be doing over seven figures a year um, to be able to qualify and be able to prove it. So you got to be able to show bank statements. You got to be able to show K ones, um, show your tax returns. Like you got to be able to prove it. And so what that does is you know it allows the group to know that we're on the same playing field. Everyone's in the room. This pro- they're producers. Right, uh, it'll be a fifty thousand dollar investment versus twenty five k, um, and then it'll only be you know fifty people max. Like we'll never take more than fifty people at a time, uh, because we really want that core group of people that we, we that support each other. If that makes sense, um, and so that's that's another big um, a lot of the differences there uh, in the the new version of our mastermind compared to the old version of our mastermind. So I hope you I hope you're able to see, you know, I hope you're able to learn a little bit there through. You know, uh, you know the offer because really that's the the new offer is those elements, right? And so, you know, as you think about, I don't know, maybe you're launching a mastermind, maybe you want to launch a mastermind in the future, maybe you're just want to launch something. Um, you, you always want to think through like, what do they get, 
what are the what are the features of what you're giving them, right? Two two to three day mastermind experience, you know, ninety minutes call, a call with me, ninety minute call with my wife, right? Like those are the, fe- the those are the uh, the features, if you will. Um, that's the list of the things they're going to get, and then you've got what's more important, which is like what it's going to do for them, right? So you want to think through, you know, how does this support them, right? I always think through this lens. You know, if I'm going to charge fifty grand for something, I want it to be able to produce over. 10 times what that investment is, right? So if someone makes an investment, you know, for 50,000 into our mastermind, great. I want to see them make over half a million bucks at least. And the way that my brain thinks about it is between, you know, our collective wisdom, like between my, the, my wife and I and the group, right, of 40 to 50 other people that are all earning over a million a year, there's, there's a lot of collective wisdom in that group that can help anybody go to the next level, whether it's affiliate promotions and whether it's support in some way, shape or form. Um, it's pretty easy to justify that investment when you, when you have, you know, that outcome coming in, right? You're like, okay, I'm joining this mastermind. It's 50 grand. I'm going to have two epic experiences per year. I'm going to get Brian and Stephanie's brain on my business, work, thinking, working and creating for me. Um, I'm also going to be have the opportunity to meet potentially billionaires. I'm also going to, uh, you know, um, have access to, you know, the financial uh, strategies that the wealthy use, right? So you start stacking all these things up, and ultimately, when you make offers, you want to get you want to make it to a place where, you know, it's a no brainer, right? Like, you know, is it easy, you know, for people to say, yeah, I'm in, like I went into that. And, and, you know, when I think about launching it, it's really simple, right? I've already got a database of over 150,000 people. It's, you know, introducing it to your warm audience makes the most sense, right? Like, you know, people that you know. I had a friend of mine, you know, hit me up and he wants to launch a mastermind. He had a big successful company, him and his wife. And um, he wants to launch a mastermind now. And he asked me what was the best strategy. And I said, well, hey, like, you know, a lot of people in this industry, you know, who would probably want to collaborate with you and, and have you in their corner. So, Make, make a list, man. Like make a list of the top 100 people you'd want in the room for starters, right? And and for someone that's you know in the in the market in the business like around the the, the space, you're going to be able to easily make a list of 100 people, right? That's pretty easy. I can make a list probably of 200 people who who I think would be good fits for the mastermind. But at the end of the day, only what 40 or 50 max are going to be able to be in it. So. Those are some of the lessons so far. Yeah, um, yeah I think that's great. And I think, uh, you know, kind of the last thing we wanted to mention um, is kind of this, you alluded to it earlier, but this concept of how uh, launching a mastermind isn't how you should start your journey as an expert. And a lot of people yeah. want to. Um, how have you seen that evolve, yeah. that even like that message and the encouragement for people to start a mastermind, like the, the messaging industry-wise has kind of changed over the last yeah. few years? How have you seen that shift? Yeah. So I think, I think, um, uh, you know, again, we learn from our history, right. Or we, or we're bound to repeat it. So, um, you know, when Tony Robbins and Ingrid Sosie launched their, their, their program together, you know, what, three, four years ago now, you know, they, they talked about, you know, starting mastermind, launching a mastermind and that's great. Right. I mean, I think it's great. I think a mastermind is a good model. Um, I think there's other better models though, when you're starting in the expert industry and kind of looking back, I, I looked at the whole bigger picture here because I ran, you know, the, the, those affiliate campaigns for Tony's first launch and second launch. And, you know, I spent over a quarter million dollars of my own money doing it. So, you know, I, as I'm able to look back on that, you know, I realized that, you know, experts really shouldn't start by launching a mastermind. Uh, you should start by either doing one-on-one consulting co- or coaching uh, or you should have done for you services or a combination of both, like done with you and done for you. Okay. Um, the reality of that is you're going to be able to build up a mountain of evidence or you're going to be able to build up testimonials and case studies of how you're able to help produce, people produce results. At the end of the day, people really, that's all they care about. What have you produced? What are your results? What is your lifestyle? And what are the results and lifestyle of those that that are under you or that are being led by you, right? And people are looking at that. People are looking at your, 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 uh, you know, those that you're, you're serving, right? They're looking and seeing, are you able to help other people outside of yourself get outstanding results? And so you want to begin to build that, I call it a mountain of evidence. You want to start building that mountain of evidence. Then you can launch a mastermind, right? You can launch a mastermind once you have the clout, once you have the respect of your market, 
once you have the results that can stand on its own, right? Even me, I mean, look, I, I launched the mastermind, what, 2019 was it? So 2019, I mean, I started in this industry in 2006, right? So over, what, 13 years after I started, I then launched a mastermind. So the whole idea of launch a use your expertise to launch a mastermind, I think is absolutely crazy. Um, I think what makes more sense is you launch a, you know, one-on-one -on -one consulting coaching program or done few services. And, and just think about it, you know, Dean and Tony switched their narrative year three. It's like launch a course, right? COVID came, COVID shut down the whole in-person game. You know, thankfully it's back, but you know, now it's launch a course, launch a course. And again, that's great too, but there's a time and place for all things. I don't think every expert should launch a course. I think that's bad advice, quite frankly. I think what you should do, again, go back to building up your, your, your resume of results, right? You have that resume of results that you've produced for yourself and for others, then it makes sense to launch a course, right? I always say, what are your results, right, that others want? Number two, do you have at least a handful of people that have, that have similar or better results than you, right? So you need to have that, like at least a handful of people that have the results that your audience wants, right? I won't even work with anyone unless those two, those two things um, mm -hmm. are there, right? Because it's, it's much, it's too challenging, right? It's too challenging uh, to sell offers when you have no results for other people, right? So you, sometimes you need to go back to the drawing board and you got to say, okay, I'm going to be obsessed right now about going and producing results. In fact, you know, my wife, you know, talked to someone on the phone I don't know, this is years ago. And so she said, Hey, you know, are you an expert? And and then, then they said, Yes, I'm an expert in this. Da, 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 da. Here's the results I have that, you know, and explained themselves. Uh, then then she said, Okay, do you have results for other people, you know, that are as good as you as your results or better? And they said, Well, not yet. And so she said, Okay, great. You know, you want you want to work with us to help you launch your expertise and scale your impact? Great. You need to go get those. Go get those, come back. That person did. He went, he went out there, he got, you know, 10 basically stories of success, came back, it's like, all right, ready, I'm ready now, right? So that's what I would encourage you to do, right? If you're an expert, you wanna launch expertise online, that's awesome, we need more experts stepping up. The, the expert industry is exploding to a billion a day, according to Forbes.com by 2025. So we all have an opportunity to ride this wave, but we gotta do it the right way, we gotta be strategic, we gotta be mindful, we've gotta, We've got to do certain things in a certain way to produce certain results, right? Like Wallace D. Waddle says in his book, The Science of Getting Rich. When you do certain things in a certain way, you produce a certain result. And that's how you create wealth. Uh, that's how success uh, plays out. You do certain things in a certain way and then results show up, right? Yeah, I think that's um, great. And so, and I think that kind of sums up for some people realizing like they might want to start a mastermind. But again, I mean, you were in so many masterminds for the 13 years before you started your own. Mm -hmm. So I think that gives kind of a good clarification of like, maybe, you know, you either need to be in one or running one, but for a lot of people, you probably need to spend more yeah. time in one, get results and then be able to start one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's a good, that's a good perspective, Seth. Um, definitely. You know, if you're, if you want to launch Mastermind and you're not in them that, you know, that's ridiculous. It's ludicrous. You, uh, go join a couple, uh, go join some top masterminds, play full out, scale your business, grow your business. Uh, right, experience other people's masterminds and then create a version of your own that's unique to you, right? Um, we can all do that. That's fine. Like, but starting a mastermind with no experience of masterminds is, is I can't even imagine yeah. doing that. So please yeah, don't do that. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> um, as we bring this to a close, if people are listening and they're like, man, Brian, I want to be a part of that next one. They want to talk to you guys. Um, and your team about joining the master, your next um, iteration of your mastermind. Uh, how can they do that? Yeah. So for now, perfectfunnelsystem.com. If you just go to perfectfunnelsystem.com and, and fill, out, fill out an application, just send us a message. Um, you know, we'll send you an application. You can get on the list. Really, that's where we're at right now with it. We're, you know, it's the, by application only. We have to have a call with you, make sure you're the right fit. Again, it's only for 40 to 50 people max. And so we're very selective about who's in the room because a bad apple spoils the bunch. And so we, we, we're now that we've launched masterminds repeatedly for ourselves and for others, it's like, okay, we're going to do this one the right way. Um, and we're going to co-create it the way that we, the, the, the vision that we have for it. And so, so yeah, if you go to perfectfunnelsystem.com, you can, you send us a message, just say, Hey, I'd like to be on the mastermind. 
I'd like to have an application for the mastermind. We'll send you an application. Yeah, that sounds great. It sounds like it's going to be amazing. And, you know, a year from now, it's going to be fun to hear the stories of people coming out of that mastermind. And it's also good to know that, you know, the lessons you're implementing come from experience, come from you running another one and wanting to make it even better. And so to the listeners, again, perfectfunnelsystem.com if you're interested in that and you can apply um, for that mastermind. Um, And thank you all for listening to Legacy Builders. We're going to continue every single week bringing you value um, of how you can scale your expertise. So Brian, thanks for uh, sharing from some of your story today. Thank you for joining me on Legacy Builders. And I would encourage you to come back to the next episode next week to get more clarity on your journey to launch your expertise online, scale your impact, and build your legacy. If you're ready to get the process started of launching your expertise online the right way, then I recommend go to launchexpertise.com or maybe you're at a place where you're ready to really scale your expertise and your impact. Go to launchexpertise.com. There you'll have several options. Number one, you can get a free copy of my brand new book, The Entrepreneur Evangelist, which I share the secrets that have unlocked more than $300 million of results for my clients, my partners, and our own campaigns. You could also join a 33 days of coaching with me uh, that's free, where I give you insights and wisdom on your journey to launching your expertise and scaling your impact over the course of 33 days. And that's worth at least 5,000 bucks, but for right now, you can get it for free. And lastly, if you're someone who wants to take the absolute faster, smarter path when it comes to launching your expertise online and scaling your impact, I'd recommend scheduling a call with my team where we can see how we can support you to crush goals and generate seven or eight figures yourself in a short period of time. We have more awards than nearly anyone in the entire community and for good reason. And we would love to help you just like we've helped them. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Legacy Builders.